So I wanted to make a really quick video and I want to, I think you guys are going to like this. So for all of you people out there who really like science and stuff and you guys, anybody who knows me knows that I'm kind of a science geek and I really enjoy science stuff. So I'm here watching a documentary and uh, the documentary is talking about um, Einstein's biggest blunder, talking about gravity um, and it's also talking about uh, this 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 idea right of how he came to the theory of relativity and how he built all this stuff. Well, here's the really cool piece. What a lot of people who don't know. Okay, so how should I say this? There's a lot of people that don't realize, even atheists, even very scientific people, that don't realize that our our theories out there, even though many portions of them are proven or or at least testable, they're actually not testable because in order to make the theory work, there has to be an interjection or an invention piece for the unexplainable, meaning that the theory of relativity works on the idea that Einstein created something called the um, the blanket uh, of space and time, and that's not been proven. So anyway, you, you just listen to this video. Here's a really crazy thing, and it's amazing. And so one of the theories that this guy has, which is now the, the theory of expansion, uh, which goes beyond Einstein's theory and is widely accepted today, the own, the own guy, you'll just see, just watch this. It's really cool. I gotta, I gotta show you guys this. Balancing process needed to solve the flatness problem. Confused, so were the cosmologists. The only way around this horizon problem was to assume that the entire region we see today started out so tiny it could fit inside a single horizon. This idea, called inflation, Why are they was in the first bathroom? proposed I don't know. by Alan Guth and then developed by Paul Steinhardt and his colleague Andy Albrecht. <laughs> Today, their version of inflation is widely accepted among scientists. Okay, so his version of inflation, which explains why the universe is expanding, is widely accepted today, but... Albrecht himself has never been wholly convinced by his own theory. So the guy that created the theory, which is widely accepted, has never been fully convinced. Here's why. So what we have to do to make inflation work is invent an entirely new form of matter. Okay, so in order to make inflation theory work mathematically, he has to invent an entirely new form of matter. Exists in the early universe and then disappears so we don't have it around today. And I was always left with a nagging feeling that if you invent so much, is inflation really the right thing to invent? And, or could nature have chosen something else? Could nature have chosen something else? Come on. Just watch this next part, it's awesome. As a young researcher at Cambridge in the mid-1990s, Xiao Magejo was also skeptical about inflation. I mean, because inflation is the only thing available, people cling to it just like to a lifeboat. And there is but, but some people need it. That's... All right, I want to stop there because you guys, this is nuts. He says, so this guy who's skeptical of this theory, he says, because inflation theory is the only thing that's readily acceptable and available, people cling to it like a lifeboat. Now, the guy, that's the guy who's skeptical of it. Now, the other guy who invented and, and this theory and who is skeptical of it himself because he understands that he had to invent an entirely new form of matter that used to exist, doesn't exist anymore, which means it's not traceable and it's just a creation in his head. He had to basically add an equation in order for his equation to work, right? Invent an equation. So he says, oh, but some people need it. So this guy says, man, the problem with this is that, you know, because it's the only thing that's readily available and explains things, uh, people cling to it like a life bolt. And the guy just said, well, yeah, and some people need it. A bit yeah. extreme, you could say. You could solve all these fine-tuning problems using divine intervention. Did you hear what he just said? He said, you could solve all of these problems using divine intervention. This is two scientists talking. Now, the guy at the right created this theory, doesn't fully believe in it because he admits that he had to invent a certain mathematical equation. He had to create matter, basically, that's, that doesn't exist in order for his equation to work. So he knows this. And this guy says, well, here's the problem with it. And this guy says, well, you know, some people need to believe in that, right? But 
What's it, what, what's his response going to be when this guy proposes the idea of interjecting divine intervention? I think inflation is a scientifically acceptable way to invoke divine intervention. It's okay, well, I, th I think that's a bit, <laughs> bit over the top, but th there's enough of the questions to, to the real... Isn't it an interesting thing? Isn't it an interesting thing <laughs> that he says, I think that's a bit over the top. So he thinks it's okay that the science community pretty well accepts his theory that he invented a completely new form of mass. But yet, when this guy says, you know, you can explain all of these problems with divine intervention, this guy says, well, I think that's a bit over the top. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. So here's the deal. I want you guys to understand this situation. A lot of people will hold to scientist theories. They will hold, and I could rewind this video and play it later because it talks about how Einstein had to invent something too. right? He had to invent what's called the fabric of space-time. This whole idea, he, he, he had a mathematical equation to explain things in the universe and the way that it worked, the theory of relativity. But in order for the theory of relativity to work, he had to invent a mathematical equation, invent this thing called the fabric of space and time. And that was a problem for him. So a lot of these theories that people will tell you are proven or are true, what they don't realize, and most people don't realize, is there are pieces of them that don't work. The, the whole theory actually falls apart without this added invention piece. Basically, the piece that's missing, you want to call it the missing link, you want to call it whatever you want to call it, this guy, this one scientist says, well, you could also interject divine intervention. Uh, but the other guy says, well, you're taking it a little bit too far. I don't know. You think about it. You tell me. But I can tell you this, man. When somebody's trying to tell you about some scientific theory that isn't theory that's been proven, they're only, it's only proven because according to the mathematics, it's proven based upon invented theory, invented pieces of that theory. All right. God bless you guys.